Hi, welcome to this introductory video focusing on the Merkel cell polyomavirus antibody test that will address the question, how can it be useful for Merkel cell carcinoma patients? My name is Paul Neum, and this test was developed in collaboration with multiple labs across multiple institutions over the past five years. The key points that I want to get across today are that the goal of this test is to detect early recurrence of Merkel cell carcinoma. The test is useful for Merkel cell carcinoma patients who made a specific antibody at the time they developed this cancer, and about 50% of all Merkel cell carcinoma patients do produce this antibody at that time. The test can serve as a very sensitive and convenient way to detect a recurrence, sometimes before it appears on traditional CT and PET scans. It requires a simple blood draw that can be done at any location and then sent out to Seattle for analysis. The results are typically available within a few weeks, and a lot of details are available at this website, merkelcell.org slash zero, where a comprehensive list of frequently asked questions and updates is kept. Certainly, you can now watch the rest of this video as well for more information on these key points. The goals of the video are to provide a brief introduction to Merkel cell carcinoma and the Merkel cell polyomavirus. Then go over the Merkel cell uh, antibody serology test and the issue of who can benefit from this test and how it can be used. Merkel cell carcinoma is a skin cancer that affects about 2,000 patients per year in the United States. Around 40% of these patients will develop a recurrence at some point. This cancer is associated with sun exposure, age over 50, and the Merkel polyoma virus, although a patient does not have to have any or all of these in order to actually develop Merkel cell carcinoma. The Merkel cell polyoma virus was discovered by Patrick Moore and Yuan Chang in Pittsburgh and reported in 2008 through a long-term effort by their group. It is now known to be essential for the development and ongoing growth of over 80% of Merkel cell carcinomas. The availability of this virus has greatly advanced this field. The Merkel virus serology test reported in 2010 is a blood test for monitoring Merkel cell carcinoma. It detects antibodies against Merkel virus proteins and a brief schematic of how it works is shown here. A piece of the Merkel virus oncoprotein is attached to beads to immobilize it and then exposed to patient's blood. If the blood or a serum from that patient contains antibodies that bind to the oncoprotein, they will attach. All the other proteins are washed away and then the beads are examined after application of a fluorescent probe for a signal which would indicate that the antibodies were present in that patient serum. The test begins with a blood and serum collection. About uh, uh, 6 ml of blood are collected and uh, centrifuged in this manner, in a tube about this size, in order to separate the blood clot to the bottom and the serum above. The serum is then collected at the local laboratory and it contains many proteins including antibodies. It is then shipped at room temperature to UW Laboratory Medicine in Seattle. The test then detects antibodies to two parts of the virus. The capsid or coat protein that can actually be seen in this electron micrograph image of a Merkel virion, Merkel virus uh, virion particle, and then this little red schematic here of DNA incorporated inside uh, that was added in as a symbol here for the oncoprotein that is expressed in the cancer cells. The capsid antibody recognizes the outer layer of the virus and indicates prior exposure to the virus. In contrast, the oncoprotein antibody recognizes a viral protein that's needed for growth of most Merkel cell carcinoma tumors. It indicates the recent presence of the Merkel cell carcinoma tumor as opposed to lifetime exposure for the capsid antibody. We'll go through both of these antibodies in more detail in a moment. The test that originally 
was described in 2010 and focused on the oncoprotein antibody was described in this paper entitled Antibodies to Merkel Cell Polyomavirus T Antigen Oncoproteins Reflect Tumor Burden, that is the amount of cancer, in Merkel Cell Carcinoma Patients. It was led by Jody Carter and Kelly Paulson. The capsid antibodies then reflect prior exposure to this virus. Here again is the, what the capsid looks like. And these antibodies are present in 60% of people who have never had Merkel cell carcinoma, that is most of us, but yet a higher proportion of Merkel cell carcinoma patients. This is what the data look like. Among 530 population controls, or people who have not had this cancer, about 40% fall in the negative range below a titer of 250. And most of us will have evidence of prior exposure over our lifetime to this virus. It is a very common virus on our skin that, for the most part, poses no real risk. In contrast, among Merkel cell carcinoma patients, 90% of these patients, a higher proportion, show evidence of lifetime exposure to the virus. These levels of the capsid antibodies are stable over years in a given person and are not useful for tracking Merkel cell carcinoma. As is shown here, in 10 different patients who did not have their Merkel cell carcinoma recur, each patient is a different color, and each blood draw, there's two blood draws for each person, is shown as a function of days from diagnosis. And you can see, although there is variability in the antibody levels in these patients, they stay essentially the same over a year or more time, even though those patients had much less cancer after a year or so. The oncoprotein antibodies are different. They are present in very few people who do not have Merkel cell carcinoma, less than 1% of people who have never had this cancer, and about 50% of Merkel cell carcinoma patients at the time of their disease. Again, the oncoprotein antibodies detect a protein encoded by DNA that's inside of the virus particle and is only expressed in cancer cells or in actively infected cells in the body. Among population controls here, the story is very different. With almost all of the 530 people uh, in this control population being in the negative range below a titer of 150 and a couple being slightly above that range. In contrast, among Merkel cell carcinoma patients, although about half do not make these antibodies at the time of diagnosis, about half have quite high levels of these oncoprotein antibodies, indicating significant recent exposure to this cancer-causing protein. In the patients who make these antibodies, they change with the disease burden. The test, though, is not useful in these patients who do not make antibodies at the time of diagnosis. How can this test be used in Merkel cell carcinoma? In patients who make oncoprotein antibodies, the level de levels decrease after Merkel cell carcinoma is treated, typically falling by a 90% or more at one year if there is no recurrence. Here are some examples of 10 patients who had no evidence of disease at the time of their second blood draw and did not experience a relapse of their cancer. Each patient is in a different color, and you can see that although there was variability in the amount of antibodies they had at the beginning, those that had antibodies fell rather quickly. Each one of these tick marks indicates a tenfold decrease on a logarithmic scale of the titer of the antibodies. In contrast, the levels increase when Merkel cell carcinoma recurs. None of these patients had a recurrence, but these three patients did have recurrences and the disease progression was noted at the time of the second blood draw. Each of these patients had an increase of tenfold or more, more than one of these tick marks, in other words, in the titer of their antibodies recognizing the Merkel oncoprotein. Here are some examples of how this test was used in patients. This is a 62-year-old man with Merkel cell carcinoma of the trunk, who made antibodies at a relatively high level, over a, over a thousand at the time of diagnosis. 
He was treated with surgery and radiation. These fell quite quickly within uh, a couple of months by about uh, tenfold and went negative by about one year after diagnosis. And he remained without evidence of disease, both clinically and on this antibody test for several years. And the test could provide significant reassurance over that time, point, time period. Here is a 70-year-old man who had a Merkel cell carcinoma of the leg initially. And here at a couple years after diagnosis, he still had no evidence of disease and a negative antibody level, which uh, continued to be negative for about three years and then bounced up to uh, by several fold uh, at approximately three years after diagnosis. At that time, a CT scan showed an enlarged lymph node by his kidney and a biopsy confirmed Merkel cell carcinoma. He was fortunately successfully treated uh, for this uh, metastatic disease. A 68-year-old man with Merkel cell carcinoma of the finger is shown here with uh, no evidence of disease and a negative test uh, about half a year after his diagnosis. He then developed an enlarged lymph node with Merkel cell carcinoma in it at uh, the uh, elbow area near his uh, affected finger. He received surgery and radiation for this recurrence. The antibody levels fell and he remained disease free then for more than a year. How can I get the serology test? Your doctor can order this test by following the instructions at merkelcell.org slash zero. Your serum would then be shipped to University of Washington in Seattle from your local lab as a send out test. Your doctor would then receive the results in a few weeks and pass those along to you. You again can look for updates, many details and frequently asked questions at this website. Our 2013 Seattle Merkel cell carcinoma uh, serology team consisted of over 20 people, some of whom were shown at this particular meeting that we had shortly before the test became clinically available. Funding sources that supported this research included the National Institutes of Health and the National Cancer Institute, the American Cancer Society, and private donors and patients. Thank you.